Uh, have you have you gotten into like the New York culture a little bit since you've moved here? A little bit. I, I got to get out a little bit more. We've been talking about pl- places to eat. Yeah. Um, you know, you got everything you can imagine here. So. Oh, you got some time to get into it. You don't have to rush. Like, it took me 10 years to get New yeah. York City pizza, bro. <laughs> I, f- I finally got him on board it took this me year. 10 years, uh, yeah, bro. you got to get into that. <laughs> when, you, when you first get traded, like, what, what was your thoughts of New York and just, like, being in New York? Because, obviously, you wanted this to a certain degree. You had some control. But, like, how has it played out compared to the way you kind of envisioned it before you actually got here? Well, it all happened pretty quick in terms of, like, thinking about living here and all that. You know, I was more based on um, a career standpoint rather than um, my living situation. So when I would come here uh, and play as a visitor, um, it would always be one of my favorite trips every year. It's like, where's New York? You know, it's always a good time. You got to have a good place to eat or go out or, you know, a rooftop spot to be just to experience the, the New York lifestyle. So... Um, I, I didn't really put into into thought about living here. I always thought like, oh, I could be here for a couple of days, but living here, I'm not sure you yeah, know, how yeah. it would be, you know? Um, so so that's what, what I've been getting used to and, and kind of getting the feel of a little better. We've talked about that a lot, like just how you, you don't necessarily, especially as a fan or an outsider, you don't account for all of those little things just adjusting to a new city. We, we always talk about that. And just like that's the biggest thing is just the adjustment of like, you know, you drove to the park every day, I'm sure, like Miami. Yeah. Now, you know you know what I'm saying? Like you yeah. live in the city, you don't drive to the park. Right. That little shit, is a, it makes a difference. And you have to get used to your routine. And, you know, because, you know, every baseball player, we're all superstitious. We got routines and you got stuff that you like to do. So you got to get used to that again in, in a different setting in a different routine man it's, it's, it takes you a while yeah for sure uh, one one thing I thought like you did so well right away to John Carlos like even when you were struggling in the beginning and I, I I've heard you get universal compliments like you you seemed to keep it cool the whole time you knew things were gonna turn around and you never you never looked bothered by the media a lot of times guys come in here and and they'll struggle right away and you could tell it's you know they don't know how to handle those questions and it is a different market but you it seemed like you you were good with it the whole time you you kind of stayed low-key throughout it um yeah I mean I, I wasn't good with it you know <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, you know I held in some curse words and pissed off moments but I mean th- that's the part of being a professional and that's that's what separates us from from most is you know we got to be able to deal with these hard times um and um you know rise above sometimes your uh how you really want to act really want to feel you know sometimes it's gonna you gotta let it out you know um which i do on the field every so often or you know you come in and you let it out and you can get it get over with but the the thing you need to learn about when you when you let it go is that um if you make yourself look stupid during that point where you're mad you're not mad freaking 30 minutes 10 minutes later you know and you go about your day so it's like be professional um, let it go and then turn the page. That, that's that's how I go about it. And that was the biggest thing I saw in him, like, when the first couple of weeks, whatever, months, um, he never changed. And that's mm-hmm. something, like, I always pay attention to that as I've been here. Like, you're going to struggle, man. It's baseball. Like, shit's going to happen. And these fans are going to fucking let you know. <laughs> they booed me off the yeah. field the other day. You know what I'm saying? Like, it is what it is. But, yeah. like, if you don't change in yourself, you can get through it. And then now, I mean, it's it's all – I mean – I hate to say it like this, but it's always better to hear, like coming here as a big name and big free agents to struggle early. Get that shit out the, way, out the way, you know way, what I mean? Yeah. Because, I mean, they, you know, it's going to happen. It's baseball. Hey, that makes sense because you're right. This is not a game. You go see, sit courtside at, for LeBron. LeBron's going to score 25. You, you know it, right? Yeah. So you could spend that, that grand or whatever. You know you're going to get your money's worth. You go sit, you know, first row behind home plate. I don't know. CC Sabathia might get shelled that night. John Carlos Stanton might strike out four times that night. It just it's a different game. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter how good or accomplished you are. That to me is why it's it's it is so it's got to be so hard mentally to get used to that, to failure because you're going to have it no matter how good you are. But I think to get to this level you have to you have to learn how to fail, which is, sounds crazy. But yeah. in baseball like to be able to get to the big leagues, you have to we've all had adversity at, at some point where we like I don't know if I can do this, you know what I'm saying? And I think that you have to have that and be able to handle that to be able to play here. And the guys that don't, the guys that have success the whole time and then come up here and have success and the first time they struggle, it fucks them up. Mm. It's, it's funny because we, uh, we got that fight of wanting to succeed every time over and over and over again. And even even as great hitters, you know, if you fail seven out of ten times, you're a great hitter. Yeah. So you got to understand what's a, what's, a, what's a good failure, what's a productive failure, and, you know, what, what do you got to kick yourself in the butt about, you know? So um, – uh, over the years, you got to really find out how to level yourself out and and 
kind of observe yourself from the outside looking in, even though you're, you're experiencing it right there. Is it different for you now? Like, do you handle it differently now than you would have as a younger player? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I like to be a hothead. <laughs> so back, I still bring it back, you know, but, but um, yeah, I mean, so, sometimes it, it's, it's what's going to make you feel, what's going to get you back to you. You know, mm. sometimes it's blowing up, you know, sometimes it's just being calm. Sometimes it's a few extra breaths. It's, it's, you got to find your wavelength and that his is different than mine. And, you know, 25 other guys, it's going to be different, but you got to find that in yourself. And, and that's the way, you know, when you become a team and you learn that watching guys, you know, sometimes I was like, all right, see, he's pissed today, you know, yeah. wh- whether that's because he's not getting calls or because he's getting bad hit, you know, maybe he's getting hit hard or, or shitty ass hits, you know, yeah, right. it, it, this depends. There's, there's a wavelength to it all. Yeah, that's the hardest thing for me still. I still I still struggle with my emotions, man. Yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, you know, it just is what it is. I've always – sometimes I'll be out there and I'm 12 years old again. You know what I'm saying? I'm pissed off at the umpire. I'm pissed off about hits. I'm pissed off at everything, you know? <laughs> so it's just – it's a double-edged sword for me. Yeah, we, we're out there preparing all – like, sometimes once the game's over, you know, I'm already looking like who's pitching tomorrow. I need to get ready, like – see a sequence, do all this. So I'm, I'm getting prepared this whole time, and then I could go up there and go over and just be like, I've just fucked, like, my whole <laughs> yeah. my whole day. I, I, I've studied all day, and it's fucking for nothing. Then I got to study again, yeah. you know? Yeah, it's right. like, so you got you to gotta, you gotta handle that, Is man. it easier for you guys, though, like, because you play every day? So, like, you, you got to get over it quick, you know what Yeah, you just push it under the rug real quick, but still, like, fuck, he got me. <laughs> you know, but I'm going to get him. Yeah. So See, like us, we got to sit there four days. I, you know? That's yeah. tough. Yeah. Yeah, like, I've been sitting for five days. Like, well, I just pitched fucking two innings a lot. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, exactly. It sucks, but did, it's not fun. I, you know, did, does it, you've dealt with it before. Does it, like, does it bother you still when you come off the mound and you, and you do get booze, right? Because that's just what happens if you struggle, no matter how much they love you and you know these fans do. Yeah. Does it hurt at all, or do you just know it's part oh, of no, it? Oh, I no, don't, I, don't, I don't bother me at all. Never did. Um, no. I, I'm just, I don't know. I'm just, I just, I'm such a fan that yeah. I understand it. You know what I'm saying? Like, we were talking just right now. Like, I want to, like, uh, John Gruden is pissing me off. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Exactly. Like, yeah. I'm going to the Raider game. I'm a fucking boot. <laughs> <Yeah>. like, I, <laughs> so Give me Khalil I, back. So back I, now. I get it. You yeah. know what I mean? So it, 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 never, it never bothered me. It don't bother me. So, it, it, you know, it is what it is. You know, you were just talking about your preparation, Giancarlo. And I remember one of the games I actually asked you about it uh, when I was doing the sideline role because Aaron Boone, throughout the entire year, he has referenced your preparation. And he's been like, you know, seeing G, as, as you are affectionately called, right? Do, do his work day in and day out. Like, I, I had no idea. Like, his preparation, the way he studies pitchers, it is impressive. Is this like, is this a new, is, did that develop over the course of your career? Because you, Marcus Tim says the same thing, that they're so impressed with the way, the studious way you go about preparing each day. Well, man, I mean, I, I had to catch up getting to pro baseball. I only played like two months a year until uh, I was in the pros already. So I had a lot of catching up to do, a lot of learning, just what a baseball, you know, rhythm and, and how how the pitcher attacks you and, you know, th- throwing pitches here just to change your eye level and then go back away. You know, I had to learn all those real quick. So I started to write those down in the minors and just get my notes. And when I see these guys again, just take a little note and – um and that helped me, and that just solidified my preparation. Like, I want to know everything I can so I can succeed when I'm in the box. Because if, if I'm in there and I didn't know that a guy does this um, or he, he, he likes to do this to me, you know, a couple times ago, I, I, don't, I don't like that. I don't think I did enough, you know. So I got to get all the information that helps me and filter out the, the nonsense and, and go from there. Do you change them, though? Or, or like, some, like most of the time, like, I know you played in the ALEs for a long time. Like when you go play the Mets, you know how they're gonna pitch you. Yeah. When you go play the Nationals, you know how they're gonna pitch yeah. you. Like that's different, right? When you when you come into the American League, you don't know how these. You don't know. Ca- how it's, it's, it's the catcher, it's, really, it's right? It's the catcher. Yeah. Um, pitchers will change it up, but the catcher usually um, has a similar rhythm to what's he, what he's gonna do with you. So uh, it, it is like a, a team approach to you. Same same as you're pitching them. Mm-hmm. I'm sure they have a team uh, philosophy on how they're gonna approach C, and it, it's all the same. So interesting, man. And I, I mean, and what's what's cool about it is like, I mean, that's got to be menacing, right? You got a dude built like this with that kind of power, who's also this cerebral about his approach. That's why, I mean, that's how you win an MVP, I was about right? To say, yeah. That's how you turn into an MVP. <laughs> yeah, that's right, man. That's how you go about it. So you were playing catch up, like you didn't. Were you, were you playing other sports or what? What? What was going on? Yeah, um, 
football, football and basketball in and, high school. Uh, yeah, and uh, baseball. I mean, you, you always need somebody really to practice. You know, so all I had was my dad. Um, once baseball season, uh, or when I was playing basketball, baseball season was coming up a couple of weeks before. I'd do my basketball, have games or whatever, and have my dad just throw to me and just to prepare me because I had to go straight into games. Mm-hmm. And then um, once I got scouted more, you know, scouts were already there and I ain't played all se- all year, you know? <laughs> yeah. So they're like, why are you, th- why are you airmailing balls? Why are you doing this? And so I was like, man, I- I'm rusty, you know? <laughs> so... Uh, that's the, that was the toughest one to just hop into. Like football, like if you're ready to run, you're ready to hit somebody, you, you go. Basketball, you can you can shoot around um, whenever you want and kind of stay ready. Um, but baseball, I mean, there, there's no practicing game game speed. You played all the way through all, all three years? Yeah. 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 So, that, I mean, I always thought, like, for me, this is my lazy ass thinking. Yeah. I played because I didn't like to do conditioning, so yeah. I only had to condition one time for yeah. football, and then I went right into basketball games and right into baseball. That's why you yeah. play. I hey. swear to God, that's why I played all three years. Yeah, the year round they guys tr- are already going they, yeah. five a.m. They, tried to, get, they tried to get me not to play basketball my senior year. I was like, "You fucking crazy! I'm not running around the yeah. track. <laughs> are you kidding me? I'm not yeah, doing for, baseball conditioning. For, I'll go play basketball, and then y'all let me know when yeah. the game starts." <laughs> I get that though. It's like it, it's sort of like a different version of, of like what is fun cardio, right? Like, it's a lot easier to get on the Peloton and, and like, have some hot instructor guide me through <laughs> than it is for me to, like, just go jog in, in, in the in the woods. You yep. know? It's, it's Running like, around for a season of six months from now, you know? Yeah, right, like, exactly. What the fuck am I doing? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 100%, man. I now, was not with that. Could you have played, John Carlo, you think you could have played either hoops or football professionally if you wanted to pursue those? Uh, hoops, I don't think so. Football, yes, I do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Basketball, I was just like Charles Barkley type, just get the hell out the, yeah. <laughs> get out the key, I'm getting this rebound and putting it back up. You know? uh, but I probably wasn't tall enough uh, when it comes down to it. But football, uh, I believe I, I could have. Um, uh, I played against a lot of NFL guys now. Um, and at the time, like uh, Shane Vereen, uh, Richard Sherman, at the time, like my, when I played them, is this guy, you shadow him. You know, when he's, Wherever he goes, you go. That's that's your guy, and that's usually how it was for most of the guys that I played there in the NFL now. So, um, and you I, locked I them down. Have. You you did you lock down Shane Vereen and well, he's a running back, so he he's so, guarding me. Oh, uh, okay. So what position were yeah, you? Yeah, I was receiver. Oh, so okay, Sherman's gosh. guarding me. Uh, gotcha. Shane Vereen's guarding me. Uh, Chris Conti's on Tampa he guarding me. Um, wow. Damn, you play receiver now? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you would like to throw to that if you're a quarterback, huh? Oh, man. That's crazy. So how, how did how'd you do against Richard Sherman? Do you remember? Um, that was in the championship. They dogged us. Oh, really? <laughs> so uh, I, I don't think any of us did shit that yeah, game. Got you. But uh, we, we scored We scored the uh, first play of the game, and we are like, all right, we got this. Then we got destroyed. We didn't get the <laughs> oh, score man. Shit, so. <laughs> Oh, that's fun. What made you then make the choice for baseball over football? Uh, my age. Um, yeah. I, was, I was 17, and I, and I never played a sport year-round. So I was like, um, sky's the limit for me. I, I can completely focus on one thing and see where I can go. So uh, I decided to give it three years and kind of reevaluate, and I'd still be young enough to go play football if it didn't work out. Um, and three years I was here. So I was about to say he was in the yeah. big leagues. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it worked out. Yeah, it worked. Yeah. It's, it's been okay. Uh, the experiment worked. You know, uh, we were talking about food before, which is a, a common favorite topic for Cece and I. And uh, did you have you ever seen the the controversy of how John Carlo eats a Kit Kat? You ever seen this? Yeah, he bites the whole yeah, fucking thing. Man. Yeah, no, that's terrible. Yeah. I saw that. Hey, it. <laughs> Fill it up, man. <laughs> you do. You just that's the technique for that's you. That's it, man. You've never snapped those them things apart. are too small for me. Just bite it off, <laughs> get it done. Is I that, go two at a time. Like I break them in half. Okay, all right. That's a little more. But then reasonable. I can eat like six of them motherfuckers though. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's I right. feel like if I ate them more like that, then I wouldn't be able to eat them. It meat. would slow you down yeah. a little bit. It make it's a it's a it's a total psychological thing for you. <laughs> yeah, can. Candy is just one of those things like where I can eat eight fucking Snickers in one day or I can not have candy for six months. Yeah. Wow. It's a weird thing like that for me. What's the cheap food you could not go six months without? Um, I think the cheap food probably, it'd, it'd probably be pizza, I guess. Yeah. That's, you need that. You uh, can't yeah, go. Yeah. I, I have that on the weekends all the time. Yeah. How about you? What's your favorite cheap food, Giancarlo? It's probably Oreo shake. 
Ooh. Or uh, like a Cinnabon, a bomb Cinnabon. Mm. But I, but like G eats clean. So yeah. like I think everything I eat is a fucking cheat meal. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? I'm eating pancakes and chicken and waffles and shit. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm always cheating. <laughs> like should, everything I eat is a cheat meal, though. You really should come out with like a fun like diet like or, or, the, or like a some kind of cookbook diet. I only like, diet in January. That's my month to diet. I used to see January? me in January. I be panicking, dog. <laughs> I'm usually off a long trip or something, yeah. and I'm like, you in the gym vegan twice this year, a day. You're sweating yeah, every I did, day. I did like everything's days, coming out uh, of his pores. Raw vegan. For how long? 22 days. So nothing cooked for 22 days, raw vegan. It was crazy. But how did how you feel? I felt like great. The first four everything? days, I was hurting. I mean, I was yeah, sweating the, everything the out. Transition. But, but after that, I felt I had so much energy every day and was feeling good and stuff. And then I don't think I could do it during the season, though. It's just hard to get the food. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Get, get it all. But I think when I retire, I could probably do it. I mean, I don't know if it, that wouldn't be that fun. You think you know you're going to like? You think you're gonna really like shrink when you retire? I'm definitely losing about 40 pounds when I retire. Yeah. For sure. Because you keep, you, you you found throughout your career the weight helps you pitch. Mass equals gas, bro. <laughs> oh, I've never heard this before. <laughs> That's pretty good, man. I like that. Well, now, the best thing that could have happened was I lost all that weight that one year and I came back throwing 82. <laughs> That's right. Nobody and, fuck with me in my yeah, weight no more. Now I'm like, I'm good. Up, yeah. <laughs> Everyone's like, get him the Captain Crunch, man. <laughs> right away. He needs it. So, what, John Carly, do you eat, you eat pretty clean? Like, what, do you have a philosophy behind your diet? Like, where it's like, okay, I know I need this amount of protein, this amount of fat, this amount of carbs, how you do it? No, it's more how I feel. Um, I don't I don't count fat or calories, really. It's just, like, I, I like to eat clean before I play, and if I'm going to cheat some, it's going to be after. Like, I'll just crush food and then go to sleep, and then I'll have the time to recover, or if I feel sluggish or something after. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I don't like to play on, on – like a full stomach yeah. or whatever, so I eat pretty light and and my bigger meals right after the game. You know, you are like when I, people are like, you know, oh, what does John Carlos Stanton look like up close? I'm always like, this dude is an Adonis. Like you, you really. I mean, you, you obviously, I'm not breaking news here with the way you're built, but I'm wondering, like, what is? Are are you a? Have you always been a gym rat? Like, is that is that a huge part of like? Have you always been that way? For over the years, uh, I, I feel like it really is your diet. I mean. Yeah, eating's a huge part of of maintaining um, the way you want your body to look, um, and uh, I, I just the the cleaner I eat, the, the less I gotta be in the gym. You yeah, know? <laughs> so, that is like, the way it works. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, true. That's, that's true, man. So, uh, do you love working out though? <laughs> do you love lifting or no? I do in the off season. You know, yeah. like li- lifting lifting during season. Um, it's too it's too like. I don't know. It's too soft for me. I was about to say it's not enough. Yeah, it's just like maintaining, maintaining stuff. So it's not really like, oh, I killed it in the gym today. I like, like if I'm gonna go in the gym, I'm gonna. Freaking go out there like piss, ready to ready yeah, to beat some ass. Yeah, we seen you pushing yeah. people up the fucking hill. Yeah, with, like, yeah. Did you see that video? <laughs> oh of him, yeah, like, man. Him, like the, walking people the, back up the hill. The, that was crazy. The workout bro. videos are insane, man. <laughs> so that's the thing. So I like that. You don't love working out in season because it, you can't do everything you it, want to like do. Band, it's like bands and shit. Right? <laughs> like, I'm over here fucking doing doing little two ounce bands and stuff, getting my shoulders ready. You know, you're, you're looking at actually like pick humans up and roll them up. <laughs> yeah. Get, get pissed off get, get the mental mindset ready you Let's know? Go. do you ever just like i mean i feel like it's the it's the lifting question that we used to always ask like in high school like, well, how much do you how much do you bench bro but do you ever like try and max out your bench just to see that was just the how do you bench bro in a different question i know it was good though right? <laughs> <laughs> i put a journalistic twist to it man that's it i did I, I haven't really i haven't maxed out since like high school man to be honest yeah i, I mean uh, what I'll usually get up to in off seasons like one twenties, one thirties. I've done like sixteen times. I remember. Wow, with dumbbells. You're dumbbells, doing... dumbbells. Yeah. yeah, that's. Um, but max. Yeah. No. Nah. No, and no need. I mean, you know, I mean, like it's. I feel like you can get hurt that way too. Yeah, it's yeah. different sport. Baseball is like you know you need it's to true. be flexible. Yeah, you, you know need what I'm to you need to be reps, flexible. Be you need to be to... strong within your in your range. I yeah. guess if that makes sense. Like fast twitch muscles and all that. What do you always say? Like. Something about – I've heard you say it in a humorous way where you're like, yo, I may be fat, but I'm strong as hell somewhere in your, like, in your arm or, or where? Are you no, talking about your my shoulder? shoulder is strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah my shoulder. Shoulder. Like I do a lot of shoulder work, and I yeah. feel like my shoulder is really, really strong. 
um, compared to where it was the years before. Just in my range of motion is really strong. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. I'm, hey, and that's that's how you pitch this long, right? It's well, part of it. Th- that's one of the coolest things about baseball is you don't got to be strong. You don't got to look like you're athletic. You don't got to yeah. be tall, short. You can throw gas or you can hit bombs. Like, you got Altuves and you got Judges. Like, right, yeah. And you got toe. And yeah, you got toe. You, got toe. Right. Right. you know exactly. what I'm saying? Yeah, it's, it's true. It's like, See what you six four? Yeah, six six. He, he's six six. You got guys five ten that can throw ninety five too. It's right. like you, you never know. I'm gonna make you jealous of John Carlo right now. Will Smith follows four athletes on Twitter. John Carlo's Dang. one of them. <laughs> How do I get on that list? <laughs> yeah. How about, have you ever met Will Smith? Yeah, yeah, I did. Oh, in, uh, in, in Miami actually, uh, not too long ago. Really? Um, Is that when the follow happened on Twitter? Uh, yeah, probably shortly. I, I think that's right. That was like the day he got his Instagram, actually. Oh, uh, really? Okay. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, obviously one of my childhood greats, you know, l- love watching everything he does and, and still continues to do now. I- I'm happy uh, he's got his Instagram because everyone's buzzing about he's it. So yeah, yeah, he's yeah. so good. He's so good. He's the dope dude. Like, yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like everything he does is tight. Th- this is this is a, a key uh, fact here, John Carlo, because you may end up playing a role um, as a adjunct producer for R2C2 because, <laughs> oh, yeah. because we CeCe and I have issued challenges to each other of like one guest that would be a dream guest for us to get on. And we gave each other a couple names, but for C, or I, I gave C, one. Yeah, I gave C a few names of options. Eminem would be the top, but a couple of interesting ones. C gave me one name. Will Smith, Will who he's Smith. never met. That's it. Okay. That's, it. That's, it man. that's the task. That's, yeah, my so, <laughs> yeah, that's the task, man. So now you know, like, the best birthday present you could give CC, and maybe it also would help me out, is tell Will Smith, you need to come on R2C. <laughs> <laughs> that's it, man. I also saw earlier this year you had a photo where you – would you go to dinner with Michael B. Jordan and Donald Glover? Or, uh, we, we were out having, having drinks um, nice. in the city. Yeah, they were in town, uh, one of these award shows or – some some cool that they're always doing. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, me, uh, me and Michael met in uh, L.A. Uh, a few years ago, and you know, been friends ever since. It's been it's been cool watching him him rise up, man. Ooh. He he he's he's uh, he's coming up in Hollywood, and he's about you know, to get the role of Superman. They're talking oh, about right. yeah, they, he might be the next they're Superman. Bouncing it around, yeah. yeah. Wow, man, yeah, that would be dope. I loved Creed. I thought Creed was awesome. And they're doing a new one, too. Yeah, yeah, Creed 2 coming out. I mean, he was great in Black Panther, too. Fruitville Station. Yeah, he was, That was right? one of his first well, ones. Well, he was in The Wire way back mm-hmm. when as a kid, which mm-hmm. is, that's, you know, that's one of Did my Did you ever watch shows. that show, The Wire? Yeah. Yeah, he, he was. He was, he was, he was but he was on The Corner, yeah, which he was. was the show before The Wire. Oh, no. Oh, I thought you meant he was on The Corner no, and The Wire. No, but it was but yeah. a show before The Wire that was called The Corner, and his character crossed over from The Corner to The Wire. Really? Yeah. I didn't know this. Yeah. By the way, you probably learned by now, C knows more TV than anybody. Yeah, he's <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, always watching on the plane. Right. <laughs> Are you a TV guy, Giancarlo? Like, or, or what are you watching? Like, if you have, if you're, what are you doing on a down day? Like, you have an off day, you're, you're hanging out, what are you doing? Sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sleeping and eating, man. That's it. Yeah. You know, this is what you say your superpowers are, too. <laughs> Sleeping sure. and eating. That's good, man. Yeah. I mean, I know. Well, the season's so crazy. It's like when you get those days, you don't really want to do anything, right? I mean, you're playing every other day. It, you, I mean, I'm, every day. I'm usually playing catch up, you know, from yeah. we usually got fifteen or something in a row that you know, and we get in late, so it's just you got enough for a nice dinner and be ready to go. Yeah, see and they off days are different from our off days, like pitchers. Like they need off days. Like starting pitchers, we don't really kinda need off days. <laughs> yeah, you know yeah. What I'm like, we get off days all the time. But you like this built la- in off days. This last off day, I just slept and ate the whole time, but I felt bad because it was our last one. I'm like, fuck, I should have did yeah. something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like we don't have any more off days the rest of the year. I could see like doing that too, where you're looking ahead, like, oh, when can I plan something fun? And you're like, Oh yeah, I'm gonna and then you get to that day and you're like, Man, I don't feel like, like doing damn, anything. I feel like kicking it. Right. Yeah. yeah. Even even if you look for it, you look to it like, all right, a week and a half we got a day off, but shoot, you could have two double headers and some rain delays in between that and you're like, nah, I'm chilling. <laughs> <man>. <laughs> I ain't doing shit. That's it, man. Yeah. I, I totally get that. But Giancarlo, before like um CeCe's talked about the hype videos like you get from Chad and the guys like four stars. Do you watch anything like that of yourself, like highlights or anything? Or anything that gets you ready, gets you pumped up for a game. Yeah, I like I like those videos. He's he's made me one. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, you gotta see yourself succeeding and and kicking ass out there sometimes because uh, it don't matter when you do something every day. You need some type of extra kick in the butt in different ways. You know, some some days it's music. You got, some days it's a, a different genre. Uh, one day it'll be a video, and sometimes it's 
Uh, you know, just seeing a couple guys, sometimes watching the pitcher walk in from from warming up, you know, just ready to go. It's uh, some some different way to get that spark. Mm, I totally get that. The Is there like a favorite artist you like to listen to when, you get, when you're in your music mode that gets you most pumped up? Um, before games, I like like hood rap stuff, like pissed off, yeah, get ready to go, like but ready. like L.A. rap though. You like he like a lot of West Coast, yeah, like, like when we like down NWA before the game, like, yeah. Like, yeah, 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 NWA. Um, <clears throat> I, I like Slam. I always listen Onyx. I always listen to that before. Wow, how um, about that? Nice. Uh, but yeah, just just uh, hype music. Get ready. to ready to go to battle. So sometimes you got to get <clears throat> judges ear then about what needs to be played in the But clubhouse, sometimes right? he plays music down cuz he plays down music in the cage before he's you know he's hitting before we go out and I'm sitting down there and like the music gets me too hyped. I'm like fuck I got to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I can't be this hyped about to go to yeah. the game like I need to be even kill, you, you know you what I'm saying? Need to chill out sometimes before. I have to walk out, yeah. Oh, I totally get that, man. Like I well cuz that's why you always say you like Big Papa, right? Cuz it kind of like mellows yeah, it's you just out. Yeah, like a chill, but I, but it but it's my song though, you know yeah, what I'm saying? So yeah, it gets me hyped. Yeah. Exactly. John Carlo, how is he experience of playing in New York compared to what you thought it was going to be uh it's uh it's about on par with how I thought I mean I've only been here once um but uh just from from seeing on tv all the time is that always on you guys are always on when we when we playing down there yeah uh but um it, it is about par like I I I realize how crazy they get um, in, in the stands and, uh, and how pissed they get if we if we ain't playing good. You know, it's it's uh, they keep us accountable. And um, you know what what I what I didn't realize is how much as players we need to stick together more from all the outside um, noise. You know, mm-hmm. because there's so much negativity. Um, I, I think baseball. There's so much negativity in baseball in general. Just but. Um, because there's so much failure and there's so much, well, what if, if he should have thrown this pitch, but if it's the same pitch and he swings through it, then it's a great pitch. You know, little things like that, that you always need some extra uh, uh, confidence and being being positive about. So I think as players, we need to stick together more by all the outside negativity or, you know, a guy got, got booed a couple of times, you got to make sure he's all right. Like, not like, hey, you're going to be all right going home. It's just like, hey, like, don't worry about that. That's extra noise. You know, we, we you got a task at hand, you know, stuff like that. That's cool because – and I know this is why – I mean, you've talked about how John Carlo fit in right away. Like, mm-hmm. that's the kind of mentality you guys all have in there together. Yeah, yeah for sure. And, it, I mean, it's 100% right. Like, you have to – I never thought about that, but you have to be closer here than anywhere else because you have to lean on your guys. Like, you know, you go check on guys and you go see how guys are doing and how they feel in the day and things like that where you don't – maybe normally have to do that in another place because there's not so much um, coverage on it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, if a guy's yeah. struggling or something like, like you that. You mess up here, you're getting attacked on right? your social media and stuff. Like, <laughs> attacked. It ain't like, <laughs> it ain't like you're going to get them tomorrow. It's like, you suck. You ain't come. Like, we need somebody new. Like, even if you've been playing great. <laughs> yeah. So, so it it's, it's depends. As a, as a younger guy, you're always reading that stuff because you love it when you're doing good and you like to see everyone like, hey, you know, great job. But that that also brings you to reading stuff when you do bad. And, um, you know, sometimes it trickles over. Some some people like it as fuel. Some people handle it different ways. But um, I always want to make it a point to the younger guys to kind of kind of watch out for that because you're going to struggle no matter what. And and you don't always need to you don't need to see that, you mm-hmm. know. Yeah. That's good. I like John Carlos should write the social media policy for all <laughs> athletes, man. For all athletes, yeah. yeah. Exactly. You're right on par. John Carlos, thank you for doing this, man. This was we've been, we've been looking forward to it, and you were fantastic. Ryan's been wanting to ask you how much you can bench. For yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> for eight he, months. He knows. I, bet you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know you could. I know you could. And on that note, thank you, man. Yeah. No problem. Yes, That's fun. Yeah. 